All right, Shalom, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekagodash, noble honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, salutations to Akim across the world, pushing his word in truth and in sincerity and with charity. And, uh, you know, I was just watching this lesson. I'm actually going to pull it up just here from the brother. Let's see if I go my history. From the brother, give and go. You know, the elder from uh, Mississippi. I brought the, yeah. And um, he was going into um, hot versus lukewarm versus cold. All right. And um, Lord willing, I could put his video in the description box. You know, because really, this is through the spirit. You know, really, this is, um, it was a great lesson. You know, and it's actually, um, you know, something, it's, it's a part of the character building lessons that, you know, Jake, a lot of Jakes don't like watching the, uh, the character building lessons, you know, the, the lessons that build you up mentally, that fortify you, you know, let me get the, uh, to fortify your mind. They don't like to watch these lessons, man. Even Jake in the truth. What does it mean to fortify your mind? A fortified mind is a citadel of hope and excitement. That's the point. We should still continue to re remain all right, and um, hold within us the excitement of this truth, you know, even catching going through our hell, even going through our, uh, you know, our pitfalls, even going through this, uh, this captivity that we're living in. We're supposed to maintain and retain this truth. Like the, uh, the elder Sahab said, you know, a week back. And that's actually the real test. All right. To see if you're going to stay hot. Or to see if you're going to go and start to become lukewarm. Or if if the Lord is going to see if you're just going to become cold. You know? This is us remaining and keeping our faith. Uh, it produces its own joy and multiplies that joy in many folds. Seeking more things that make it interesting. So this is why we're supposed to continue to study. We're supposed to, we're supposed to continue to stay occupied. Or you're going to become lukewarm or cold. And it's to myself, first and foremost, it's, as I say in all these lessons, man, we're not supposed to be getting, we're right at the end. We're literally at the door <laughs> at the end of this, this, uh, this captivity for our, for our, uh, for the nation. And we don't want to be involved in this world. Now we have to maneuver in this world. All right. Um, why? Because we have to live, we have to get our daily bread, but our whole focus and our excitement should be in this truth. Because ultimately, if it's not in this truth and your excitement is more so in this world, then the Lord is going to be angry with you. And it also says what? That the love of the Most High, the love of the Most High and the truth is not in you. All right. It says the mind never stops once it is fortified. That's why we have to do this with our mind. And that's what character building lessons do. It has a constant taste for anything good and becomes creative. Okay? So we have to remain hot, excited about this truth to myself first and foremost, because what? Things in your life, they do come up and they do get in the way, but that is the test. Like Elder Yashwamba was watching the video he did about them dudes, um, Fopi. <laughs> All right? You know, the dudes are talking about my depression and... You know, my anxiety. We all have the we all have the shit, man. The whole that's the whole test. It's to remain excited about this truth and remain all right, adhere to the prophecies and what's going on. All right, let's get this as well. Revelation three. Um, let's see here. Revela Revelation three and fourteen, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So we have to choose a side. There's no, like the brother, I was watching the brother, um, the elder, uh, the elder down in Mississippi, the elder of war. He was saying there's no gray areas with the Lord. You have to either be on the Lord's side or you're going to be on the side of the world. And this is the test for us at being in this flesh because we're enticed and we're subjects of vanity as Yahweh Shai has created us to be. That's the whole test. That's why we have the scriptures. That's why we have the spirit of the Lord 
all right, that keeps us on the side of the Lord while being in this flesh. Because if you don't maintain and continue and be excited and continue to delve and be occupied in this word and this truth, you're going to become lukewarm and eventually cold. And that's what none of us want to uh, become, man. Let's go in here real quick. Let's go into lukewarm. G5513. Tepid, lukewarm. Metaphor of condition of the soul wretchedly fluctuating. Jump on the fence. <laughs> Between a torpor or a fervor of love. So you're on the fence, basically. That's what I mean, lukewarm. And we can't be that. Now, sometimes on the flesh, you, you become that because so much stuff comes up in your life. But then you have to remember, you always have to go back to the scriptures. When you're fluctuating like that, we're gonna it's going to happen. When you're fluctuating like that, go watch a lesson. Go read. Don't do something fleshly all right, to put you on the other side of that fence into being cold. You see? Now, let's go to the definition of cold. Because the Lord wants us either hot or cold. This is to myself first and foremost, and then you know this is really through the spirit. It's not to anyone, in, it's into anyone in uh, specific. This is just in general. Let's go to the word cold. G five five nine three. Cold, metaphorically cold, sluggish, inert, inert, lacking the ability or strength to move. You would lack when you become cold. You lack the ability to do lessons. You lack the ability to, to to go teach the word. Why? Because you have fallen into that, that pot of love in this world more than this truth. That can't be. Synonyms, unmoving, motionless, immobile, still, stock still, stationary, static, dormant, sleeping. <laughs> what did the Lord say about us sleeping? We can't go back to sleep. We don't the Lord done woke us up to this truth. We can't isn't we can't go back to sleep, man. Unconscious, out cold, comatose, lifeless, inanimate, insensible, senseless, slothful, sluggish, lethargic. We can't be that, man. That's to myself first and foremost, man. We're not that mean. These these are all uh, attributes of being cold in the spirit, man. Let's continue. Let's go back. Let's uh, exit out of this. Let's read it again. Revelations 3 and 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. I would. you. you so the Lord is saying, you're going to either be cold or hot with me, man. I know you're going through your struggles. I know. I understand. Because it breaks it down when you read through the book of Revelation. The Lord says, I know how thou hatest evil. Roughly paraphrasing. But are you going to be cold or hot with me, man? I know you're going through it. I know it. I've been through, I've been through it. I had to give my life for it. <laughs> That's the, that was the Lord's lot. But you have, we have to continue to maintain to be hot with whatever, uh, 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 with whatever portion the Lord gave you. You be hot with that portion. Verse 3, uh, Revelation 3 and 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good to have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So, yeah, the Lord, you know, you might get blessed with stuff in this world that can make you go cold. Loving that stuff more. But you have to continue to remember you're in captivity still. That's yeah, the Lord might bless you beautiful. I hope you get like the brother uh the other I watched said in uh, Mississippi. I hope you get more. But you have to remember that you have to utilize the things that the Lord gives you, and you still have to continue to do this work. Or it's gonna make you what? You're gonna become a lukewarm or cold, and we can't become that, man. Because what? Revelation 3 and 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So the Lord will leave you alone. You see? Why? Because you love this world. Let me get a scripture. Let's exit that out. Um, I think it was James. Yeah. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Let's get what that word means. Define enmity. Now, the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. See? 
that is the spirit that the Lord is going to have towards you if you continue to put this word, this world or things in your life over this truth. If you continue to put your feelings, your depression, your anxiety, we all have it. We're in the flesh. We're fighting a fight of faith. If you can, if, but if you put that over doing this truth, the Lord's gonna. That means you love this world, because really, that means you, you, shit, you mad or depressed or have anxiety because you want to have things in this world. Fuck this world. We all go through that because we're in the flesh, we, and we're Jake. We like things. We like nice things. We like to have things. We like to have a woman that want that that listens. That's not gonna happen. We like to have children that are not wicked. Children that get it. It's not, it's not really, for the most part, it's not going to happen. It could, but it's really, for the most part, it's not. We want to have, we want to have money in our pocket. Sometimes we're not going to have it. And sometimes we're going to have it and it's going to, you're going to want like that money a lot because it's a blessing from the Lord, but it's also a test to see if you're going to follow after that money and focus on that money more than it's truth. And that's a test that we all go through because the Lord does bless you. But with those blessings, he going to see what you're going to do. Are you going to still push this word if I give you stuff? Or are you going to care about the stuff more than this word? The state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. And that's that spirit that the Lord is going to have towards you. If you put this world or love this world all right, over this truth to the point where what? You become lukewarm. You become cold. You become sluggish, lethargic. All right. As pertains to pushing his word. You see? Now we all have our, you know, uh, writer's block. <laughs> I think the apostles go into that. But then even then, still go watch the lesson. Still go read. The Lord is going to give you something. If you believe in the how about Shumi Yashai that he's dealing with you, the Lord is going to give you something. This is why we have to remain occupied in this truth. Or else what? We're going to start to love this world. And that's in the Lord is going to have a spirit of enmity against you. James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world. Let's get defined friendship. Friendship, the emotions or conduct of friends, the state of being friends, old ties of love, old ties, see, of love and friendship. Synonyms, company, companionship, fellowship. Comradeship, camaraderie, social intercourse. Now we have to move and maneuver through this world, but we have to. What it tells you that you what you really uh, uh, um, you pay attention to the time when you're amongst the indiscreet, as the scripture says, roughly paraphrasing. So you don't. Yeah, we have to use wisdom and maneuver around these people, but we really shouldn't be getting too uh, chummy chummy with people, man. And some of these people might seem cool, but they don't have the spirit of the Lord. They're not in this truth. So they can be a potential agent. They can be an agent to pull you away from the truth, not to hurt you or anything. All right. Specifically, but they could just be an agent to pull you away from the love of this truth and teaching. James 4 and 4, ye adulteresses and adulterer, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the most high. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. And we don't want to be an enemy of the Most High because we need the Most High and His Son all right, to keep us alive. <laughs> they are in charge and they're responsible for our life, a life or death with us, man. Whether we go, whether we wake up in the morning, call all y'all, watch me outside, man. This is, um. let's get a quick example. Um, bear me one second. Let's exit some windows out. This is our uh, Acts fifteen and thirty six. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord. And see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. So, see, there was a, there was a, a man that did not go to the work. He didn't, he, would, he didn't want to teach. He didn't want to go out to the highways and byways and teach. 
All right, he went to go do something else, which shows what? He was lukewarm. He wasn't in the spirit of doing the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of the Most High. See, so Silas, he was hot. He was ready to do the work, ready to push the word. And we all get in that spirit, but we all have to snap out of it because we have to continue to occupy. We have to continue to push this word, man. And he went through Syria and Sicilia confirming the church. And then this is the spirit because what? You had those dudes at Fopi. I just watched the lesson that LD Ashwamba did. They stopped doing the work for two, uh, two weeks or something like that. That's unacceptable, man. That's unacceptable, man. And that's the spirit I'm doing this lesson at all. It's, it's through the spirit, man. It's, it's all linked, man. It's unacceptable, man. We have to continue to do this word, do this work, man. Because that shows what? That we love the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shai, more than we love the world. Second Timothy's Um let's see here. Bear me one second. You see something. This is truly a battle, man. <laughs> this is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life, man. <laughs> Second Timothy 4 and 10 with Demas. Second Timothy 4. Second Timothy 4 and 10. For Demas hath forsaken me. This is someone that went cold. Having loved this present world. Fuck, like I said, fuck this world, man. Yes, we have to maneuver through this world. Let me get a scripture real quick. This is the rock. Yep, this is it. So rock twenty seven. So rock twenty seven and twelve. If thou be amongst the the indiscreet, like in this world, amongst these people. Observe the time. We shouldn't be talking to them a lot like that. Being hanging, yeah, you know, small talk, and then keep it moving. They're dead <laughs> spiritually. They're of this world. They're gonna be destroyed on this side. They, now, if they some of your friends that you had nowhere, they're gonna come back on the other side, man. Or they could possibly come into the truth later on. But we had to observe the time when being around these people that don't understand what's going on and don't understand the times. That are not watching what's going on on the earth. But be continually among men of understanding. And what are you going to do when you're among men of understanding? Talk about the scriptures. You might do a lesson. You're going to teach. See? Or else what? You're going to love this present world like Demas did. 2 Timothy 4 and 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. We just read about the love of the world. is enmity with the Most High. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonic, Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Del, Delmatia. See? He loved this present world, man. John 21 and 17, and I'm going to end it off here, man. John 21. Let me start up a little bit. John 21 and 12. Yahweh Shai saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Yahweh Shai then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Yahweh Shai showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Yahweh Shai said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. That's teaching this word. We have to continue to feed the sheep, feed these watchers, feed the believers that are watching us. 
We have a task. They have a task. They have to listen. They have to stay adhered. They can't fall away back to the truth. They have to continue to watch. They have to continue to study and listen to us. We have to continue to study so we can continue to teach, continue to edify, continue to feed the Lord's lambs. John 21 and 16. He said to him, and we have to love that. He said to him, because that means you love Yahweh Shemel Shai. John 21 and 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. So Peter was like, Lord, how many times you going to ask me? But the Lord didn't care because he wanted to see all right, what his spirit was. Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Lord, you know all things. You're the, you're the son of the most high. You know I love you. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shai said unto him, feed my sheep. That is our whole job. See, that's what the Lord has given us the truth for. And this is to myself first and foremost. And it's a fight. It's a battle. <laughs> it's not easy being the teacher. Ask a teacher in a, that teaches the school of this world. Shit is stressful. <laughs> but that's what comes with it. We have to continue to be occupied and remain occupied in prophecy and in teaching his word. You see, the Lord said, occupy until I come. We have to do this until the Lord comes or until this reality is done, whenever that is and however it, 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 it comes forth. Get another scripture and we'll end it off here, man. We're occupied. We're supposed to occupy it in this truth until the Lord comes, man. And that shows forth that you what? That when the Lord comes, he shall find you doing, as the scripture says. And he shall make you ruler. That's what we want. We want to be a ruler. I want to be a ruler. That I'm pretty sure from the apostles and elders on down to all the brothers around the world, you want to rule. They, The apostles, you know they want to rule. They've been doing this for 30, 40 plus years. The elders, you know they want to rule. They've been doing this for 10 plus years. So on and so forth, man. Luke chapter 9, 19. Let's get the whole chapter. Luke chapter 19, red letters too. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. Let's get that word occupy. And the and etymology. Because if you're occupying, you're gonna stay hot. And after you do this work, then you go do whatever, you know? <laughs> That's the balance, because I'm about to play uh Halo. <laughs> Occupy. Let's see here. Occupy is a verb. Mid 14th circa to take possession of and retain. That's the spirit. Remember, we have to retain this knowledge, retain this truth, retain the spirit of teaching, retain. We have to, if you're if, if you're if you're getting cold or lukewarm, go around brothers, go read, go watch a video. Go look up some information. In order to do what? Retain or keep this knowledge and the spirit of teaching this word. Which is you occupying until the Lord comes to take up space or room or time. Employ. We're employed by Yahweh Shemel Shai, man. You see? So we're supposed to retain and occupy because and uh, occupy this time or space that we've been given. Because what? We're employed by Yahweh Shemel Shai, man. So the Lord said, occupy until he comes, man. So, um, you know, Lord willing us edify. I don't want to make it too long, you know. We have to just continue to retain and uh, occupy until Yahweh Shem Yahshua comes. We see the prophecies popping <laughs> and um, we have to continue to teach. All right. We have to continue to feed the Lord's sheep. Call all Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rekakudash, and the blind to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Citations to Yahweh across the world, pushing his word and truth and his sincerity and with charity. Shalom and a Bible ball. <laughs>